This is a manual cataract surgery for ophthalmology residents. This is called SICS, small incision cataract surgery. This is how the superior rectus brittle suture is placed. This is 7.5 millimeter measurement and the incision size, the main wound size is going to be 7.5 millimeter. This is the ideal measurement for the beginner. The nucleus comes most of the time in total if the incision size is 7 to 7.5 millimeter. Conjunctival peritomy has been done and now tenons. The tenons is incised and it is also cut its attachment near the limbus is cut and this tenons is trimmed little bit because sometimes if there is if the conjunctiva retracts this tenons gets exposed and there is a possibility of tenons granuloma formation so it's better to trim the tenons little bit. Now very mild weight field cautery is done. There should not be any burning or charring of the sclera. That's it. After this weight field cautery, a 15 number Bart Parker blade has been taken and this is how the incision is placed. It is near the limbus and mild frown. Beginners should not put U shaped incisions or frown incision too much frown is difficult for the beginners mild frown is okay and you'll see that this wound will not need any suture and here it is a crescent blade is being used for making the sclerocorneal tunnel the tunnel should be of the corneal length should be about 1 to 1.5 millimeter the right edge of this wound is this ha has been a small incision at the right end you can see this is a intumescent cataract in this case my plan is to put the intraocular lens under irrigation and that's why I have put two side port incisions. In intumescent cataracts, there is a high chance of the erexis going to the periphery. So what I do is, in such cases, first I do a very small rexis. I call it a mini rexis. And after this mini rexis is done, I enlarge the rexis. Here it is. The capsule has been stained 
and now this is a 2.8 millimeter entry now through the side port I introduce a 26 case bent needle systematum and incise the capsule and you can see that some oily fluid comes out indicating high intra lenticular pressure now this ureter is used to do this small rexus now a simco cannula is used to aspirate some lens matter through this small opening through this mini rexus and once the intralenticular pressure reduces the cataract is no longer intumescent it will not behave like intumescent it will behave like any other routine immature senile cataract so it is cataract viscoelastic substance has been injected again now I take a vana scissor make this small nick then I take the ureter again hold this small capsular tag and enlarge it like this So in intermescent cataract, this is the way. If you want to place the intraocular lens in the capsular bag, this should be the approach. Now the main wound is made, it is completed from one end to the other end always cut when you go forward never cut when you come backward and this is how you prolapse the nucleus now the nucleus is in the anterior chamber viscoelastic substance is injected in front of and behind the nucleus now an irrigating vectus is taken and irrigating vectus is the safest instrument fish hook is good if the wound size is appropriate or bigger than appropriate irrigating vectors can be used even if the wound size is smaller and see how beautifully the nucleus comes through a 7.5 millimeter incision in this case it would have come through 7 millimeter incision also but nurse should not struggle a lot for smooth delivery of the nucleus this is the ideal size of the main wound now cortical cleanup is being done with the help of a simco cannula lot of cortical matter is sticking to the
posterior capsule. This video is being made at 1080 pixels so that you can see the picture very nicely. Now here goes the intraocular lens. The irrigating proof keeps the anterior chamber formed, supports the optic of the lens and both the haptics go into the capsular bag. Young colleagues, this is a little tricky. You can try implantation of the lens under viscoelastic substance. Once you learn this, implanting under irrigating fluid, you will love it. You save a lot of time and moreover, the best thing is there is no rise of intraocular pressure in the postoperative period. And this is how the interchamber is formed. And then the superiectus bridal suture is removed and subconjunctival dexamethasone and gentamicin is being injected. It will push the conjunctiva forward and when the lids will be closed, the conjunctiva will go near the limbus. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will give you essential tips for SICS.